what we're going to be going over today um, is first and foremost, what is new in SOLIDWORKS Electrical 2D and 3D in 2021? Uh, and then we're going to go into some electrical and PCB tips and tricks uh, that you should know of. Um, my name is Ken Reinert. I am your host for this webinar. Um, so thank you again for taking time out of your day to join me as I review all this content with you. And we have about a half hour. Uh, hopefully we won't run over, but if we do, um, I apologize off the bat. Uh, but let's get started. So first off, we're going to cover what's new 2021. Then we're going to get into PCB tips. Then we are going to cover some 3D electrical tips. So with what's new in 2021, we broke it down into two sections. The first is SOLIDWORKS Electrical Schematic, uh, where we're going to cover the quality of life enhancements. And what this is, is enhancements that make uh, the ease of use of SOLIDWORKS Electrical even better. And then the lighters, things that have been uh, added to help you create your schematics uh, even faster and better than you already can. Then we're going to get into SOLIDWORKS Electrical 3D and routing. Um, and why there's and routing, routing is the routing that's in premium. Uh, it's the electrical portion that's in SOLIDWORKS Premium. Everything that's new in that is automatically new within Electrical 3D as that builds on that functionality. So we're going to cover routing and what's new with flattening and harness drawings. So starting off with the quality of life enhancements. The first thing is, is the excluding parts from bill of material. This was a huge enhancement request um, and SOLIDWORKS was gracious enough to add that to this release. So under the manufacturer parts library, each component is gonna have a new option to exclude from bill of material. So you just place the checkbox. And then when you do your reports, uh, there's going to be option check. So a real nice uh, enhancements. Within the project general configuration, you're going to see three options for wire management, and these are toggled on or off. So you can add automatically wires to an equal potential, remove wires when they're disconnected, or automatically merge lines when a symbol is deleted. Without that checked, if you delete the symbol, the wires will not uh, reconnect. So you have those three new options. Also, uh, within the project itself, if you right click on a book and you go to new at the very bottom, you're going to see multiple. And you can create multiple folders, multiple cover pages, multiple schematics, wireline diagrams, and mixed schemes. Uh, so you just punch in how many of those uh, do you want to create so you don't have to go back into the command. You know, if you need three schematics, you don't have to go in there three times to create those schematics. You can do it all in one step now. So another really nice enhancement. So under the, the lighters, um, the first thing, generated symbols for terminal strip drawings. Uh, so we're going to start at the bottom image here. So this all starts within the terminal strip drawing configuration. Uh, you're going to see under symbols, under custom symbol, a toggle to turn on if you want a specific symbol, either a symbol out of the box that's loaded with the initial install or any of your custom symbols you might create per terminal type. Uh, and then the first image there is it will look at that terminal type and look at what symbol you call out and place that within your terminal strip drawing. For those that are doing Excel automation, uh, there's a new add-in uh, for Excel to help you generate that Excel form uh, to call out everything you need for that Excel automation. So a nice new enhancement for the Excel automation people out there. They also added uh, an archiver and schedule process. It's an executable that can be run um, at any time or it can be tied to Windows scheduler. So you can schedule uh, your Windows scheduler to automatically archive and you can see the options that you have all projects, all objects, uh, things like that. Uh, so you have some options there, which is a nice enhance enhancement to uh, 
to keep track of all of your backups and keep you on that backup schedule. There's also a new SOLIDWORKS electrical viewer. Um, this gets installed automatically when you install SOLIDWORKS electrical. And when you go into the viewer, it is not taking up uh, a license to view any of the electrical information. Uh, that way, if you're using the viewer and you're just looking at the schematic information and stuff, it is exactly that. You can't do anything with it. You can just view the projects and the information that's within the projects. I did look to see if this was a separate download, like eDrawings is a separate download, the PCB viewer a separate download. However, I did not, as of yet anyway, see this within that download section. Uh, so I am waiting uh, for more information, uh, whether this is only installed during a normal installation or are the plans uh, to put this out uh, just like a regular a viewer so anybody can download it, which is my assumption. So under electrical 3D, uh, the ability to route cables as individual routes, another uh, huge uh, enhancement request that they added. So within your project under cables management, each cable is gonna have an option under characteristics to select whether you want this to be a separate 3D route assembly. So what this means is, is when you select route cables within SOLIDWORKS, it's gonna start routing all the cables. And if it sees this option is checked, it's gonna create a separate route sub-assembly of that cable or cables that have this option uh, checked. That way it's not, you know, as it is today, uh, one route uh, for cables as all the cables uh, within your project, which may or may not be uh, what you're looking for. So now you have the option to separate all those. And another uh, highly requested enhancement they added was splines and arcs are now supported in an EW path sketch. So you now more accurately can lay out uh, your routes um, if, if need be. Um, so you're not just stuck with lines to get your uh, EW paths to follow, uh, your wires to follow. So now splines and arcs. So if your EW path, just so you know, has splines in it, it will automatically go to a spline route. Line will not, uh, even if you have line selected, it will ignore that and go right to, uh, to use splines. So in routing, again, this is with electrical 3D as well as the electrical routing that is in premium, SOLIDWORKS premium. They revamped the route wires through clips command. Uh, you now can do multiple wires uh, in a single command instead of having to go back in per route uh, segment to route through a clip. And they also cleaned up uh, the user interface of this uh, panel. The arrange routes now have icons instead of just the list. It's a little cleaner, uh, more easier uh, to follow the options you have when you're rerouting wires or cables through clips. The other new thing uh, that they added was you can select several routes for electrical attributes. You can either select route segment or wires, which can be from uh, you know separate wires, so you don't have to go one wire at a time, depending on how big your your wire routes are or your harness routes are. So you can add attributes uh, to call out in your tables within SolidWorks routing uh, without having to go one by one, which is really nice. And the other thing, which is really nice, is if you right click on a route segment you can lock the properties of that um, route. So you lock it so that if uh, you're working on another part of that route, uh, you don't wanna accidentally move that route. You don't wanna accidentally update when you go update uh, wires and cable length uh, to update anything you don't want to update or change. You can lock those 
properties in. And that's just a right mouse click and you're gonna have lock routes as an option on those route segments. Under flattening and harness drawings, uh, the first thing is the location of the tables in flatten routes. For those of you who have done this in the past, uh, it would pretty much just place those tables right on top of each other. So now they're more logically placed uh, throughout your drawing. So cleanup should be a lot smoother and faster for you. Also the table properties uh, that you bring in to a flattened route. Uh, when you change the parameters of a table, you can propagate these parameters to other tables in the drawing. So you can select things like font size and click fix the test to read resize the tables, uh, things like that. So it's really nice uh, enhancement to make your drawing look even cleaner. The other thing with flattening is you now have the option to select individual components that you do not want to rotate into that front plane when it's creating that flattened route. You can select components to maintain the 3D orientation that they currently are in. So you're going to have uh, that option as a new option in your flatten parameters. Also, you have the option to keep the wires connected to the pin locations instead of fanning out. And then if they are fanned out, you have the option to reconnect them to the pin connections. Uh, so you can really get that flat uh, the wires connecting to the connectors uh, looking the way that you want them to look within your flattened drawing. And if any of those connectors uh, do not have wires connected to those pins, there's a new options for tables to hide those empty pin rows. So you do not have a, uh, a call out of just an empty row uh, within your table. So you can hide those rows so you can have more real estate on your drawing. If you uh, created a wire termination type or circuit termination type within electrical 2D schematic uh, for a connector or wire being connected to a connector, that information is now pushed to SOLIDWORKS Electrical 3D and can be called out in a bill of material. Uh, so that's really nice. And uh, additional properties available in the bill of material. Um, what they did here is I actually did look um, for a list of the properties. Um, I couldn't find really any list only uh, that there is uh, more properties that are assigned to connectors and wires that can be called out on a bill of material. Um, so I'm hoping uh, that uh, what those new properties are uh, will be available soon so we can do a blog or something like that uh, to let the word out of what those new attributes are. So not only is SOLIDWORKS adding new things, uh, but CATI is also uh, always creating new things to help out our customers. And by doing so, we're creating new training classes of what people are asking for. Uh, and what we're adding is an Excel automation class. We're adding a harness 2D schematic class, an electrical harness 3D class. That's going to come in uh, sometime next year. Um, we wanted to take our time on this one uh, because of the new enhancements that are coming out in 2021, uh, not only just with the electrical side of things, but also with SOLIDWORKS. Um, because of the 3D, you're using a lot of the basic SOLIDWORKS commands uh, for your route. So we wanted to make sure that any new enhancements uh, that make 3D harnessing easier, uh, we can add in this training manual and stuff. So stay tuned for more information on that uh, once everything is completed, but you will see that coming uh, in 2021. Uh, we also have a SOLIDWORKS Essentials for the electrical 3D users. Um, we've noticed as we've been training uh, throughout the years that not all electrical engineers that are getting into the uh, electrical 3D world um, have SOLIDWORKS uh, experience 
Um, so there's some basic uh, fundamentals of SOLIDWORKS MCAD commands uh, that you really should know, but you don't need to know everything like a regular SOLIDWORKS designer might need to design a mechanical product. You just need to know all the commands to make it easier for you to use the tool to create the electrical assemblies and components and things like that. So we put together a class um, for that. So more information on these classes, the Excel automation class, um, not only goes over Excel automation, but macro best practices. And that's because Excel automation heavily utilizes macros for its uh, creation. So you're gonna go through a sample project exercise using an Excel form example that you create. And then they're also gonna cover some custom automation getting started guides and tips and tricks to help uh, with your Excel automation. So if you were designing similar but different types of machinery projects um, where you're just adding uh, things to an existing schematic, uh, moving things around a little bit, options-based typed machinery, uh, Excel automation is something you should absolutely uh, look into. It can definitely streamline your process. Like this example here, on the left is just uh, three motors. On the right is one motor. This is what the schematics look like. Three motors on the left, one on the right. This is what the 3D assemblies look like. And say an order comes in and you have all the schematics done for a one. So we're just gonna change it to a three, answer some questions. This could be, this is only two questions, but you could have five questions, 10 questions, whatever. Uh, and then you start with a template. You know, this template just has folders to place things. You run your Excel automation. It automatically generates the schematics for you based off of those macros. And then the only thing that's left, if you're using the 3D portion as well, is open up the assembly. It's gonna ask, what do you wanna do with the components that are no longer part of the assembly? You reroute your wires, your cables, or your harnesses, so that information gets pushed back to the database. So when you're doing reports, all your reports just need to be run so you have the correct information, and you're done. The project is done. So it literally uh, could cut down days into you know minutes, hours, you know, depending on the size of your project. A huge time saver for similar uh, but different type designs. The 2D class, um, this is a one day class. It's gonna go over the ins and outs of creating and documenting a harness within the electrical schematic professional, just 2D. It's going to start with creating symbols. So we're starting at the very beginning, different ways to create connector symbols uh, within a schematic, within a line diagram, within a 2D cabinet layout, and what tools are available in a schematic, in a line diagram, in a 2D cabinet layout uh, to best show a flattened route and what information is available with each of those documents to create a harness layout. So it's everything uh, covered uh, within Electrical Schematic Professional uh, to create harnesses. And then the essentials class, as I talked about, so as of now, it's a one day class, um, but this can be modified into less than that or uh, even more based off of what is the SOLIDWORKS knowledge of your electrical engineers. So we can uh, customize this class to best fit your needs um, as well. So we're gonna get into tips and tricks now. First thing is SOLIDWORKS PCB, little known tips and tricks. Uh, we get this question um, a lot of, um, I know this command was in Altium um, because as you know, SOLIDWORKS PCB, uh, you know, is, is, a, is Altium uh, in a sense of the, of the word. It has a lot of the functionality as Altium, it's its underlying, um, code in the background. So a lot of commands are in SOLIDWORKS PCB, they just don't have icons. Uh, and an example of those two are jump component and make PCB library. So jump component, if you're not familiar with it, it moves your mouse to a footprint of a component in a PCB layout. 
and the make PCB library, after you import legacy layouts, it creates a footprint library out of all of the existing footprints on the board, a really nice command. Um, but there's no icon for it. So how do you get to these commands? You type them in the command search that's in your upper right hand corner of the interface and that's what's highlighted here. So another cool command is actually a SOLIDWORKS enhancement as of last year, uh, the envelope publisher. Uh, and this works very well pushing data back to SOLIDWORKS, PCB, or Altium. Now, what this does is it allows you within a SOLIDWORKS assembly, in this case, the board assembly, to insert components as reference only, meaning only the graphical surface and edge data um, comes across, not the history of how the part was made, but it allows you to add references to the faces, mates off of the faces, uh, relationship of sketches to the edges, things like that. But it's not called out in a bill of material. Um, it's just part of um, the assembly at that point. And it, when you push it back to SOLIDWORKS PCB, uh, it the part comes across beautifully. Uh, so if you're worried about clearance, uh, part placement, interference, things like that, but you don't want to add components that are going to be part of the SOLIDWORKS assembly, Envelope Publisher is absolutely the way to go. And if you're not familiar with it, you can just go to help of uh, within SOLIDWORKS and just type in Envelope Publisher. It's going to explain some more information. You can also call our support for that information as well. Another command, cross probe. Uh, now when using cross pole, hold the control key down. And by doing it, this you can, it keeps the software from switching back to the original active page layouts or schematics. It'll also immediately end the cross probe command rather than assuming more cross probing is desired, which is nice. So you don't have to, you know, get that extra mouse click of, of the escape key. And then it's useful as cross probing to make an edit to the associated symbol or footprint. So again, cross probe, try it with the, uh, with the control key. And that's going to bring us into SOLIDWORKS electrical 3D. So I only really have time for uh, one tip here, but it's a question that comes up quite often, which is how do you show clips within a flattened route? So they revamp the clips within 2020 so you can uh, route multiple wires or cables uh, at once instead of having to do one at a time, which is nice. Um, but what if you want to show the location of those clips within your flattened route? Well, the first thing you do is you have to add some intelligence to that clip, just like you need to add some intelligence to the electrical components that those cables and wires are connecting to. And this is done within the electrical component wizard. And if you're not familiar with that, within SOLIDWORKS, with SOLIDWORKS 3D add-in turned on, under pull-down menu tools, SOLIDWORKS electrical, electrical component wizard will open up to this splash screen right here. Now, because Electrical 3D builds on that functionality within SOLIDWORKS Premium, uh, if you have SOLIDWORKS Standard or SOLIDWORKS uh, Professional, um, a lot of these tabs won't make sense because you're not going to have piping uh, or tubing capabilities within Standard or Professional, but with Premium, you do. So really, um, it's, it defaults right away to routing component wizard, which is what Electrical 3D is going to look at. Also, a uh, covering uh, library too, it can tie into that as well. But for clips, it's going to be an electrical component. You can see you have different options to choose. You're going to choose clips. And then it's going to ask um, or run through steps to what is required or optionally 
required for the part to act as a clip within your routes. The first thing is an optional point, although I do uh, recommend adding all of the information, even though it, it's optional, um, because I think you get better functionality in the long run. Like for instance, this R point, um, it's showing two in the preview. So when you do your flatten, and if you ever did flatten route in electrical 3D, uh, you'll know that it's going to put the length of the wires automatically uh, via a little annotation uh, within that flat. So the wire is going to stop at this point. You're going to get a little wire here, and then another one is going to continue on. And it's going to put the length of those uh, wires within your flat. So if you put one point in the middle, it's going to give you the location automatically of that uh, clip. And I'll show you what I mean on another uh, slide here. So after you put the route points on, a required geometry is the axis of rotation and clip axis because there are commands, uh, specific commands to rotate clips to make sure your wires or cables still follow that clip if you are moving it around. So you, it's a wizard that's gonna walk you through how to add those axes. Mate references, it says it's optional. However, uh, I would always recommend that you add mate references to all electrical uh, components. It just saves a lot of time when you're dragging and dropping those connectors in or those uh, panel components, in this case clips, it could be in a panel or within a harness in an enclosure, that it just snaps to that geometry so you don't have to spend that extra time uh, mating every clip. Uh, it just automatically will use smart mates. So after you get the smart mates, the next step is the valid validation checked, which is basically going to make sure that it has all of the required information. So routing understands it is uh, a clip. And after you do that in your assembly, if you want it part of your flattened route, you got to make sure it is under the components folder under the route you were looking to create a flat of. And this is done just by dragging and dropping that components uh, right under that components folder. And then when you route, you just make sure flatten clips is selected. And because this has all of the clip information based off of the wizard that you just ran through, it is gonna place that in the appropriate location. And you can see the lengths it puts. So from this connector to this side, if you have two route points, if you have one route point, it's the distance from the connector to the cent is this dimension. Same way with this one. So depending on where you place that route point is where it will give you the different um, lengths depending on what your requirements are. So that is uh, what I have. Again, I want to thank you uh, for your time today. Again, if you have any questions, uh, feel free to e email us. Uh,